Hey you guys, welcome aboard Crab Central Station. My name is Darcy and today we have a super fun video for you. We are heading into the kitchen to make some gourmet hermit crab food. Let's get started. Before we get started on this recipe, just a couple things that I want to talk about. First of all, this is not a typical meal that we feed our hermit crabs on a daily basis. This is just something fun and extra that you might want to do on a holiday, or maybe you're passionate about cooking and just really enjoy getting in the kitchen and trying new things. Here's a great recipe for you to try out. We do not feed our hermit crabs meals like this all the time, you guys. That would be so expensive and time consuming. But I do think it is super fun sometimes to get creative and think how you can make some of the meals we eat also safe for your hermit crabs to eat. And when you do that, you're making dinner for your family, you can already have those ingredients in the kitchen out and you're prepping them for your family, then you can start to think how, what can I do with these and how can I prepare these to be hermit crab safe? And that way you're not wasting ingredients. So that's kind of how my brain thinks when I come up with these ideas. The second thing I want to share with you guys is kind of your prep work ahead of time. So any fruits and vegetables that you have, you're going to want to go ahead and wash them thoroughly, scrub them down in prime treated water. So great thing to get is just a bowl like this, Fill it up with water, drop some prime in there, and then use your scrub brush and scrub down your vegetables and your fruits. I've already done that ahead of time so that we don't have to do it on the camera, but I did wanna make sure and let you guys know that you need to do that ahead of time. Also, when you are prepping your ingredients and looking for things at the store, double check the ingredients on the back. Make sure they are whole ingredients. No preservatives, no additives, no dyes, um, no extra salt added. All right, so you were just looking for whole ingredients. So, you know, um, if I have like this flour right here, I'm gonna be using this in just a minute. On the ingredients, it says almonds, coconut, pecans, walnuts. That's it. Those are all whole ingredients that are safe. They've just been ground into a flour. So make sure that what you're using is hermit crab safe. Everything I'm showing you today is approved, so it will be good to go. All right, now on to the recipe. On the menu today are shrimp tamales with a jalapeno cilantro drizzle, on the side, we're going to have a vegetable kebab and for dessert, a strawberry with a mango puree. So we're gonna start with our vegetable kebab first. You guys can pick just about any vegetables. So many of them are safe for our hermit crabs. I just have some orange bell pepper here. Our crabs love bell pepper. I'm gonna cut them kind of into squares, right? Then I also have Carrots. All right, if you are a child, please make sure that you have adult supervision to cut your vegetables. We Safety first, you guys, safety first. You might need some help with that. You know, actually you can buy most vegetables already pre-cut. So kids, if this is something you wanna do all on your own, maybe look into getting something like that. Okay, I've got a free carrots. Um, now I've got some cucumber. And all this is gonna be for my lunch later this week, so. I'm feeding the crabs and myself all at the same time. I like to just have a scrap bowl over here to the side. All right, cucumbers are not as rigid as the other two vegetables, so I'm gonna cut them a little bit thicker so that they stay on the kebab a little bit easier. And I'm just gonna cut them in half. I think in fourths might be a little bit much. Okay, now I have some yellow squash. Some of you maybe are into gardening and you can grow your own vegetables. 
just adds a whole nother dimension. Kind of the same idea as the cucumbers. And then finally, the last thing that I'm gonna put on here is fresh corn on the cob. So you can choose to either pre-cook your corn on the cob, that's fine, or your hermit crabs can eat it raw. Either way is, is good. Um, I left mine raw this time around. I just didn't think about cooking it ahead of time. And so I shucked the corn and now I'm just gonna cut some pieces off of here. I think I'm gonna leave those around because I'm afraid if I cut them anymore, the individual kernels will start to kind of fall off, so. Okay, so I've got corn on the cob, squash, cucumbers, carrots, and bell peppers. The list goes on. It's pretty much never ending of the different kind of combinations that you guys could do um, for these vegetables. So get creative. These are made out of um, palm branches and they are found, well, I found them at the party store and they're meant for cheese and vegetable uh, trays at parties. Um, they have a sharp tip on the end, but not like too sharp. Anyway, so you're gonna just take your vegetables and skewer right through the middle of them. The carrots are a little bit harder to get through, but they do actually slide on there. So there we go, the cutest little veggie kebab for your hermit crabs. And it'll keep them from dragging it off of their dish into the substrate somewhere. So there we go. And I'm just gonna set these to the side because we can use these later. I can eat them myself. <laughs> so they are still definitely good. Okay, next on the menu, you guys, is the tamale. So before I start making that, let me just tell you, there is some prep work in the tamale. Um, before, like early in the morning, when you know that you're gonna be making this, take your corn husks. They are dried in a bag when you buy them from the store, um, and they're very um, tough and brittle. And so you do need to soak the corn husks in prime treated water. You could also use your hermit crab um, salt water primed as well. That would be safe. And then you can notice here that I have a dish on top of the corn husk. And the reason for that is because when you first pull them out of the bag and put them in the water, they float. And so you want to actually weigh them down. You can even fill this container with the water itself. You wanna weigh them down so they're all the way under the water for several hours so that you can actually work with them and fold them. So that's what you need to do with your corn husks. What we need to make is the masa, right? So when I think of tamales for me to eat, I love the like breaded masa and tamales. It's so yummy, but that's not hermit crab safe. So I had to think about how I could make safe masa for my hermit crab tamale. And what I came up with was this nut flour blend that I told you guys about earlier, which is so good for them. All those different nut flours are gonna be excellent. And then I'm also gonna be using virgin coconut oil, which is safe and really just great for them. And also organic coconut water. Now you don't have to use coconut water. If you wanna use your regular tap water that's primed, that's totally fine too. I happen to have some of this in the refrigerator and they love coconut, so I went ahead um, and used it. So what you're gonna do first for the masa, I guess I can move this for a second. Um, just get a microwave safe dish. You're gonna put in one tablespoon of your coconut oil and you do need to heat it up because you want it to be liquid, all right? So I put this in the microwave for 20 seconds and it's totally liquefied now. So that's gonna be perfect. One tablespoon. Then you're going to use two tablespoons of your nut flour. And two tablespoons of your coconut water or your prime treated tap water. And then just stir it up. You are looking for that kind of masa consistency. So um, it takes a little bit for it to kind of start to thicken up a little. And you can always add a little bit more flour if you need to. If it's too thick, add a little bit more of the coconut water. OK, 
Okay, so this is spreadable. So I'm gonna bring my corn husk back over here. Okay, we're just gonna work in the middle of our corn husk so that we have room to fold it. Just put some of your moss on here. The crabs are gonna go wild for this. This is great protein, omega fats, gonna help with their molting, shedding their exoskeleton. Okay, you can see that I have a lot left. So you can make several of these, like I said, and freeze them, which would be great, okay? All right, I'm gonna slide this forward. Now we're going to add the inside to our tamale. Remember, that's just our masa, our outside. So it is shrimp jalapeno inside. So you do have to cook shellfish all the way, or you have the potential of spreading something called shell rot to your colony of your hermit crabs. You don't want to do that, obviously. So you need to cook your shellfish. It's really easy. If you just want to cook a few like we're doing today, um, you can get a measuring cup and heat up your prime treated water to a boiling temperature. And then you just take your uncooked shellfish and you drop them in there until they cook. And you can see them turn pink when they are ready. And actually the exo on this shrimp is just as good as the meat inside for your crabs. So don't throw it away. You can definitely give it to them in there along with their other calcium type food enrichment foods. All right, these are nice and pink, which means they are cooked. So I'm putting it back on my plate here. All right, so go ahead and grab one of these guys here and we're gonna to have to take off the shell. They're hot. You can devein it if you want to, but honestly, the crabs love poop, so might as well just leave it in there. Okay, I'm just cutting it into small bits because it's tamale, so you don't want big pieces in your tamale. Just making little bitty pieces of shrimp here. I'll put that to the side. And then also inside of our tamale is going to be jalapenos because our hermit crabs like it spicy, you guys. I think that's kind of fun. Fun that they like spicy stuff. So again, just chop it nice and small. The seeds are safe for them also. You can take them out if you want, it's up to you. All right, we are not gonna use all of these jalapenos right now, but we're gonna use some more later. All right, so now we're going to build our, the middle part, the meat of our tamale. So we have our corn husk here with our little masa mixture. And for the meaty part of the middle, the bulk of the middle, I'm going to use tricolored quinoa, which is a great grain for hermit crabs. And then we're gonna add our shrimp that we just cut up right here down the center a few of these mushrooms right here. And then we're gonna to top it off with these jalapenos, okay? Now you're gonna take a little bit of your masa mix and put it right on the edge of your tamale, the corn husk, because it's gonna kind of help keep it all together. You're gonna to need another one of these. Don't forget you guys that you need to fold in your ends first. And these are a little bit more rigid than what I would have liked. So you can even soak these overnight if you wanted. Okay. So you're just gonna roll your tamale. And then the edge over here with the moss on it is gonna help kind of seal it closed. And then use one of your little party skewers here to kind of hold it into place. And then you have your tamale. Isn't it so cute? All right, let me wash my hands. We're gonna move on to the next thing. All right, to top off our super yummy tamale, we are going to make a jalapeno cilantro drizzle. So I'm gonna use a mortar and pestle, very heavy. Um, so your base of it, is going to be the same coconut oil that we used 
for um, the masa, but this time we're not gonna melt it. We're just gonna leave it in its raw form. Okay, so just put this in here. And then we're going to cut up some of this jalapeno. Throw that in there. And then we also need some cilantro. So I'm gonna actually chop this up just a little bit, just to kind of get it started. I don't really like the stems, but I mean, you can include them. All right, now you're just gonna take your pestle and squish it in there. You're trying to make kind of like a paste, a little bit of a thick paste in there. Try to get all this good stuff off of here and then around the edges as well. Okay, you can kind of see, we have kind of like a paste here right now. There's some bigger pieces of that jalapeno in there, so I'm gonna do this a little bit more. Okay, you guys can kind of see what it's looking like. It's a little bit thicker than what I was wanting, so I'm gonna add just a little bit of the coconut water. Just a few drops in there just to kind of, we want it more of a drizzle than a paste. All right, this looks pretty good. You guys see that? It's like the green sauce on top of tamales or on top of enchiladas, except hermit safe. Okay, so I'm gonna bring my tamale over here so you guys can see it. And I'm just gonna use a spoon. I'll just use the spatula here, it should work out fine. And I'm just gonna drizzle it across the top. Green sauce on my tamale here. Crabs are gonna love this. Okay, and then let's just take a little bit of the cilantro as a garnish. Gorgeous. All right, and that is our tamale. All right, you guys, for dessert, we are going to make strawberries that are filled with a mango puree. Yum. So the first thing we need to do is actually get our strawberry ready because that's gonna be the bowl that holds our mango puree. So you're just gonna take a strawberry and carefully, you're just going to try and hollow out the middle to create a basin for your mango puree to sit in. All right. I'm going to make it a little bit deeper so you can get more mango in there. Also, something just to keep in mind with your strawberries especially, they mold really quickly in our the warmth and humidity of our crab habitat. So these you'll definitely have to remove one day after. Okay, now this isn't gonna sit up to hold your mango puree, so I'm gonna chop off just the bottom tip like that, and that way my bowl will sit flat. Isn't that so cute? All right, and then we need our mango so that we can start our puree. Mangoes are kinda hard to cut. I honestly don't know the best way to do this to cut mangoes, so this is how I do it. <laughs> I just cut off the skin around the edge like this and then cut pieces around the big seed that's in the middle. You might know a better way to cut a mango. But for this, we're gonna be pureeing it anyway, so it doesn't need to be real pretty. It smells so good. They're pretty good. It's really good, actually. Wow, juicy. <laughs> okay, crabs are gonna love this mango. 
So I'm just gonna take these pieces here and put them back in the mortar and pestle and grind them up to make it a puree. You could do this in a blender, you guys, but I wasn't gonna bring my blender over here on camera. So I figured this would be a good way. And really like chunky is kind of fun anyway because the crabs can eat it, grab it with their claws and stuff. So it doesn't have to be like totally smooth, blender smooth, right? Sliding around in here. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Easier said than done, I think. So now we've got our mango puree in here. So we're just going to take our strawberry and fill it up with the mango. Then we're going to take just some plain walnuts. Okay, when you look for nuts in the store, you wanna make sure that you're getting some that have no extra salt added. So these are plain walnuts, just nothing else, just plain walnuts. So what I wanna do is crunch these up to be smaller pieces. You could get like a Ziploc bag, you know, and a hammer if you want, <laughs> beat them up, but you can chop them however you like to do it. All right, so I've got some small pieces here. I'm just gonna drizzle it on top of my strawberry desserts here. Makes it really pretty. All right, you guys, and there is your strawberry with mango puree dessert topped with walnuts. All right, you guys, and that is our very fancy gourmet hermit crab meal for tonight. We have shrimp jalapeno tamales, with a jalapeno cilantro sauce, we have a vegetable kebab, and for dessert, we have the strawberry with mango puree topped with walnuts. You guys, I think it's beautiful. I think it's tasty enough for me to eat myself, and I just think the hermit crabs are absolutely going to love these. I hope that you guys enjoy making gourmet meals for your hermit crabs and maybe this sparked some fun interest inside of you. Get creative. There are so many things that you can make for hermit crabs. So many of the foods that we eat are also hermit crab safe, which makes it really fun to get in the kitchen. If your kids have hermit crabs, this is a wonderful way to get them in the kitchen learning how to cook, but also how to properly take care of the hermit crabs and create great memories for your family. Guys, if you have not already done so, please subscribe below to our channel and click the bell so that you can be notified when we drop new content. Also, we do tons of fun stuff on our social medias, so follow us on those platforms as well, you guys. And until I see you in the next video, happy crabbing. See you guys next time. Bye.